Hi golfers, Nick here from Nick Taylor Golf. It's Friday, so welcome to another lesson on golf tips. This week on golf tips, we're gonna start a three-part series covering learning the stack and tilt golf swing. So the first thing that controls where the club hits the ground is the body weight. We measure that from the center of the hips and the center of the shoulders. So it's a question I get asked quite a lot, how do I learn the stack and tilt golf swing? And I'd always reply to the particular person, say, look, go and see an authorized stack and tilt instructor. It's the best way to learn the stack and tilt system. I know there's a lot of golfers that I work with online, uh, and I really recommend that as well. It's a really good way for someone to give you a, an idea of what you need to work on, how to practice. I do a lot of videos where I analyze golfers' swings, tell them how to practice, and we set up a voice call and we can go through these different changes that we're making and kind of have a step-by-step -step process for you to improve your golf swing. So this series is for you golfers out there that can learn stack and tilt and they can have some sort of access to a practice area or even just swing in a club in the garden outside on the mat would be good enough to help you improve your golf. A few golfers out there want to learn a little bit more about the system, make sure you check out this playlist. But in the meantime, let's go with part one of how you can learn the stack and tilt golf swing. In part one of learning the stack and tilt golf swing, we're gonna focus on, first of all, the first key fundamental of playing good golf. And this is the first key fundamental of what all the best players do. Now I suggest when you're practicing to set up a camera, your phone's good enough for this. Just need one set up down the line. And I would try and get this one set up in line with your hands and roughly about chest height. And the same thing from a face on viewpoint. We want the camera to be in line with the center of the body and roughly about chest height. It's very important when you're analyzing your golf swing that you get the same viewpoint. If I set up with the camera in the wrong place, the golf swing is gonna look different. From these two viewpoints, we're gonna get a good idea of how you need to improve your swing. So in part one, we're gonna cover the things that control where the club hits the ground. Now, the first thing you need to be able to do is to measure where your club hits the ground. You don't even need a golf ball for this. So I can set up on this mat here, literally just hit the mat, and I can see where my club's hitting the ground. And it's the same if you're able to hit shots off grass or even at a golf range, you can lay down an alignment stick, you can line down a piece of tape, which I've done in other videos, but really just the first thing you need to be able to do is work out where your club is hitting the ground. It's the first key fundamental of playing good golf. So if you start to measure where your club hits the ground, I suggest maybe doing 10 swings. Set up, make a swing, see where your club hits the mat. And I could see there, my club hit just forward of where it started. And that's what we're trying to do. On this mat here, I do have a grid system, which we're gonna talk about in part three, but on this grid here, I can see where the club started, which is on this back tee claw, and I hit in line with the center point on my left shoulder as I came down. And that's kind of where we're trying to hit. We're trying to hit a couple of inches in front of where your club starts. If I make 10 swings, I would expect that all of them would hit roughly in that same spot. So if you're finding your clubs bottom out in different places, then you really need to work on your low point control. And it's quite often the case that when I test golfers in the bay here, and even outside on the grass, you'll see that the club will tend to hit the ground in different places. And more often than not, it'll be behind, or even the golfer will miss the ground. They may hit some good ones, but generally their consistency of doing that varies. So today's video, we're gonna talk about the three things that control where the club hits the ground. So the first thing that controls where the club hits the ground is the body weight. We measure that from the center of the hips and the center of the shoulders. Set up, we want to be slightly forward with the lower body weight, and then in the backswing, we want no shift away from the ball. And then into the finish, the hips moving forward of where they started. Now, the next thing that controls the low point are what the hands do. So if I take my setup on the mat here, I could move my body in the perfect way to get into impact. However, I could still hit behind the golf ball here. And that's because there's another piece involved and that's where the, the position of my hands are as they hit the golf ball. If I set up to the ground here and push my handle forward and then make a swing and keep them forward, keep that same relationship of the handle forward, I'm gonna hit forward on the ground. However, if I have the handle slightly forward and then for whatever reason, let my club overtake my hands, even though I have my weight forward, I can still hit behind the ground. Once the shaft and the club form a straight line, they've reached the furthest point away from the body. If I push the handle forward, that club's gonna be moving closer towards me. 
So as I set up, if I put the handle slightly forward and then unhinge as I go through, I'm going to hit behind the golf ball. The second thing that controls where the club hits the ground is where the handle is. And as you come through to hit the golf ball, we want that handle forward so you have some shaft lean as you hit the golf ball. So the first two things that control where the club hits the ground is the body weight and the hand position. So we want the weight on the left and the handle forward. The next piece which gets often missed in the system is the swing direction. And this is something I work with a lot of golfers and it's a really big key part of controlling where the club hits the ground. The best way to explain swing direction is using a noodle. I'm gonna angle this like I would do in the golf swing. So you can see this uh, pen mark here on the noodle. I'm gonna put that at the bottom or the low point of the swing. Now, if I angle this noodle too much to the right, I actually hit behind the golf ball. So the more my swing direction moves to the right, the more behind I'm gonna hit. The more I swing left, the more forward on the ground I hit. So the swing direction has a big bearing on where the club hits the ground. So a good way to measure this, if we have a line for the shaft, we want that club to track that line in the takeaway. However, coming into impact, if your club drops below that line, that club's gonna be coming too much on the inside. Your swing's gonna be going too much out to the right. It's gonna move the swing direction too much to the right and move that low point further behind the golf ball. So the angle the club comes in has a big bearing on where the club hits the ground. A lot of golfers, when they first learn the stack and tilt system, I get a lot of golfers online working with this, is they will actually be swinging too much to the right because they're trying to swing more around their body by having the weight forward and swinging the hands in and moving the shoulder down. It makes it easier to swing around your body. However, you can do it too much. So the swing direction would be the third piece. So try and make sure when you're swinging into impact, the club isn't dropping below the shaft line where it started. And then as you go through on the exit position, the club should be exiting here just below the shoulder. So we have three things there that control where the club hits the ground. We've got the body weight, the handle location, and the swing direction. So I'm gonna hit a shot here, then we're gonna sit down afterwards, take a look at my swing, just to give you guys an idea of how to measure it. So I've got the camera set up from face on and from down the line. Just before we take a look at my swing guys, I just wanna just point out, at the end of this video, I'm gonna to explain to you a drill that you can go away and practice to help with your low point control. Now we're gonna take a look at my swing. We're gonna take a look at those three pieces just to show you guys what it should look like on the camera. When we analyze my swing here, we're gonna use some circles and lines to help reference your golf swing. Now the app I use is Analyzer Golf, which is downloadable on the Mac. I think it's a fantastic bit of software for me to analyze myself and to analyze my students. So I would definitely recommend it. There's a couple of different options. There's a student version and a pro option. I'll link in the description some links for the app, which is downloadable and also a product code. So if you want to put in my product code, you actually get a discount on the app as well. The first thing you need to do is measure your swing from face on. So I've got the circle for the head and the line for the hip. So if you just watch my swing in the back swing here, now a lot of golfers by this stage here would be starting to sway off the golf ball. They'd be moving through the line. Their head would be moving away from the target out of that circle. What you'll notice is I make my swing, my head just tilts a little bit to the left and I stay inside of that line for my hip. To see if you're hitting behind the golf ball, the first thing would be to look at your sway. As we move into the downswing, what you'll notice is, as I get to just before impact here, my weight is starting to move left with my lower body, and my head's staying pretty much in that circle. And as you get into impact there, you can see my weight continues to move forward. My head's pretty stable now. It's turning and tilting into the finished position. So you can see how far forward my hips are now from where they started. So that's me moving my weight through my lower body and you can see there was, wasn't much sway or movement with my head. My head movement just tilts to the left in the backswing and tilts to the right in the follow through and my lower body moves through. So that would be the first thing I'd look at when you're measuring your golf swing. The second thing that controls where the club hits the ground is the club shaft and the arm. If you take a look at my setup here, if I drew a line down my left arm and the shaft, it's pretty much a straight line and you would see how my shoulder there would be in front of the golf ball, which is the center point of the swing. The measurement we want here is to try and keep that handle forward as we come through impacts and not let that club shaft overtake the arm, which I see in a lot of high handicapper golfers. So just as I come into impact here, I've drawn a line down my left arm. You can see it's just in front of where the shaft is, and that would be the checkpoint there to make sure your handle's forward as it comes through. Now, if I just wind this back a couple of frames, another checkpoint here would be when the shaft's at parallel position, you can see the, the butt of the club's almost on the golf ball there. 
Now, I teach a lot of golfers that actually have the hands too wide here and there's actually daylight between their hand and their body. So that'd be another checkpoint at P6 where the shaft is and where the hands are just to help with keeping that handle forward and then you can see through impacts here. My arms are staying pretty straight, the handle's staying forward and you can actually see where the, the club sort of catches the, the mat here. Just see where the mat scuffs up as it goes through. So you can clearly see I'm hitting forward. So I've got my weight forward and the handle forward two massive key things to get that low point in front of the ball. The third key thing that helps you hit the ground in front of the golf ball and get that low point in a consistent spot is the swing direction. And as I talked about earlier, if you have a line for the shaft, this is the measurements I use. I use a line on the shaft, another one through the top of the elbow. This forms like a cone. It's kind of like the swing plane for the golf club. We don't want that club to drop either side. We want it to go outside where you'd slice the ball. You don't want it to drop underneath where you might hook the golf ball or swing too much to the right and move the low point back. So the check point here would be in the takeaway. You can see my club head and my hands pretty much trace that shaft plane there in the backswing. Now in part two, we're gonna get into the body movement, but today's really just showing you guys how you can measure your swing. Uh, as I get to the top, you can see my arm doesn't lift above that elbow plane, and then my club shaft finds the middle of that cone coming down. So, like I said to you earlier on the video, if my club was swinging underneath that shaft plane, then I'm gonna be swinging too much out to the right, moving the swing direction too much to the right, and the low point back. And then as you can see in the finish here, my shaft exits just below my left shoulder, and my hands exit on the elbow plane. So they're the checkpoints that I'd be looking at from the side view. If you can video your swing and you can slow it down and take a look at it in detail, it's gonna give you a really good indication of what you need to work on and practice. Just to finish up here, I'm gonna give you guys something you can practice your low point control with. This is the best drill that I've found that you can use when you're practicing either in the mats or outside on the grass, ideally on the grass, because you can see where the contact and the low point is, where that club's hitting the ground and taking the divot. I think that would be even better, but if not, you can see on the mat, and even just like I said to you earlier, if you just have a, a alignment stick in line or a bit of tape, you can really clearly see where the club hits the ground. So let's take a look at this drill now to help you guys improve your low point control. So for this drill, when you set up, have your lower body weight on the left. Keep it there in the backswing by flexing that left knee. When you come in to hit the golf ball, we want that handle as forward as you can. I teach a lot of golfers that let that club pass the hands and once you do that, you're adding loft and you're moving that low point behind the golf ball. We're just gonna start off going some half swings and just punching the ball. So as you saw that, as I went through, I kept the handle forward and then I just went through and just stopped there. If you keep the bend in that right wrist, it's gonna help you keep the handle forward as you go through. Also, as you notice, as I went through there, I made sure I had my weight on the left. So you can see how I'm extending my body here as I go through, keeping that handle forward. I'll just do one more. So weight on the left, handle forward, keep that handle forward, just do half swing, punch it out there. So that's a really good way to practice the low point. Just doing half swings, keeping the weight on the left, keeping the handle forward, shorter finishes. That's gonna help you compress the golf ball like the best players do. Thanks for watching golfers. If you don't already, please subscribe to some other social media platforms. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me. And we'll see you again next week for part two of learning the stack and tilt golf swing. The most I These things are gonna help you hit the tee swing too much inside, and then swing 